G'day guys, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to do an Acropovic compare and install on the 2021 MT-09 SP. Let's go. To begin with, here's the stock for comparison. And to compare, we have the Acropovic all set up. Let's give it a listen. And now for the install, this will be 12mm socket here, 12mm socket for these six bolts through here, another 12mm just under here, so right here. But before you take any of those off, you're going to want to take out these Allen bolts here, H5, you can either use an Allen key or Find this with a socket on the ends, much better. This one here, and around the other side, in here as well. In order to get better access to these areas, found it's better if you just turn the bars sideways, and able to grab these ones out, that one out, and then around to the same side. This one out. This one has a washer on it. Once they're both out, this should be able to move forward. You can pull that out if you want. Lift that up and over. Now that the radiator's nice and loose, move down to the base just under here. And we can now move this sideways and off that hook essentially, a little hook there. Now that the radiator's loose up the top and loose down the bottom, off that and off that hook, we can now move on to the next stage, which is that uh, 10 mil bolt right there, holding the bracket to the radiator. It's essential to remove this first as you can see the close proximity to the headers and it won't allow the headers to come off unless this bolt or bracket is out of the way. Just using the 10 mil socket to undo this. And with that bracket removed. Moving around to the other side. So the left side radiator, we've got these two push pins here. So after the, you can see here, after you've unscrewed the centre piece of them, you can then pop them out. And on the same side, using a H4 to remove these two Allen bolts, should be able to now take them out. And that should reveal the plug here, which leads to the O2 sensor, which will allow us to later to remove the exhaust without inhibiting the plug. You also might have to undo a zip clip here holding these together. Moving back to the plug. You can see that little tongue just under inside the inside the plug. If you pull that outwards, and then just pull down, and the plug should come out. Next, we're onto those six header bolts, all twelve mil. The easiest setup I've found is two extensions on a small ratchet. That way, it's able to reach all the way up 
into the without interfering with the radiator. Go through and loosen each of them, but if you're having trouble reaching, just push this up and you're able to access the top bolts. Once you've gone through and loosened all of them, you're gonna to wanna to take the middle ones first. Yeah. That way when you finish, you're not left with stuck in the middle, I'm trying to take the pressure off on the middle. It's easier just to do the outside edges. Get that one off, that one off. Now all of them are free. Moving on from there, we're down here with the 12 mil underneath here. And on the other side, only this 12 mil here. Now, the easiest way I found, just support the exhaust with your feet, pushing upwards. And once we take out this 12 mil, this side as well, should allow the whole exhaust just to drop out. Let's see it from there. And just gently lower it down. Maybe have a cloth, or in this case, a rubber mat underneath to take that. And there's halfway mark. Retain this bolt on this side for, with the Akaprovic, we'll be requiring that to attach it to there. You'll also need a washer and a nut, which is supplied. Um, be wary of these copper exhaust rings as well. Uh, they tend to fall out. If they fall out, place them if, if they stay in, all the better. It'll make it much easier if they stay in. Also on the kickstand side of the bike, we won't be needing this anymore, so just pop that one out so it doesn't fall out on the road, chuck it in the spare parts. And now to install the Acroprovic. First to lay everything out, headers first, link pipe next. Just be sure to grab the O2 sensor from the original out of there. Place it in the link pipe now, much easier that way. And the can. easier to connect these now easiest way I've found just a dab of WD-40 on the ends and I'll make it much easier to slide in also just a tip easiest way to know that you're lining them up correctly if you've got the headers facing down which is the easiest for these otherwise they move around a bit so if they're for headers facing down they'll sit nicely together and then with the link pipe, the easiest way is notice these two, the O2 sensor and the clip. If we just rotate them upside down, just for this section anyway, as long as they're poking out there and you've got this center pipe here, it'll line directly with this and the other two. So we'll lift them both up now together and join them. Once they're in place, wiggle them around to make sure it's a nice snug fit and we're on to our spring. This side here is the only side that's tricky, where it has two springs, we'll need to go into the one hook. And you've got to do this now, as later on, underneath there, you won't get access to it. Well, limited, very limited. Wedging the headers between your knees. Just grab the spring, anything really. Hook the first one on. Second one on. Switching it around the other side. Same applies to the last one. And we're done. Next up, we've got to put the three copper rings back in where the headers go. This can be tricky, they'll always want to fall out. Um, as you can see, the easiest way I've found is if they are not going to stay in there. Just get a dab of glue, put it on this side, and that should help it to stay in. Let's put those three in. When I say glue, just using a bit of multi-grip here. Just get a little bit of that. And just gently 
just around one side. There's actually glue on them from factory and that usually helps them stick in, but if they've fallen out, just do that. With them all in nicely in place, now time to install the headers. Placing the exhaust system underneath, make sure to wrap this end just so we don't scrape the swing arm here. And then using the original bolt from here previously that we saved, but now with the additional washer and nut, we're now going to mount this to here. That makes it much easier when you're putting in the headers. You can actually pivot it off here and easily place these in. So that now that we've lifted the headers up, you can see that bracket. We're just gonna line that up with there and put that bolt in. The washer and the bolt now go in place on this side. So just in here and now to tighten it up. That's a 12 mil. Uh, that's nicely secure using your foot again to pivot help pivot it helps moving back up to the headers just move these into place and secure them with the bracket bracket slide it into position but first you'll also notice just make sure they're all flush you can see this one here so it's not you can see this one it's not just make sure it goes all the way in like so and then that should be a perfect fitment now perfect. and again using the 12 mil just make sure they're both done up equally you definitely don't want to over tighten one side at a time you want to do them evenly at a time or you'll squash the little copper rings inside there and probably get an exhaust leak. So evenly do them up. Once they're both, there's no movement in there, then you can gradually tighten each one individually. Also, if you're having trouble reaching this top bolt, you can always grab the radiator hose with the other hand and lift that up. Then you've got free movement in there. With those all tightened, moving back onto this bracket for the radiator, I'm gonna place that one back in there for this bracket definitely going to use some loctite to prevent that from rattling loose just make sure when placing this bracket back in there make sure it goes up flush and underneath there and this again is a 10 mil once that's now in place we can now move the radiator around and hook it back on to that little mount. Just make sure. Now move that one forward in place. And with this one, before we do that, we just have to make sure we grab this back out. Lift it up and over. Yeah. So that little thing can go into the grommet once that slides into place that sits flush in there and slides along there and to put the allen bolt in through here start with this one first as it'll be much easier to do this one now then later and then onto the other one tighten both these up all the while making sure this is still in place Moving on to the O2 sensor, you want to grab the end and literally post it up and through this hole here. On the other side, you can see where we brought that cable up and through here. Just be mindful of any uh, chain spray over spray that it doesn't get in the end of the cable. But once that's up through here, we're gonna route it underneath there on the other side of the quick shifter, all the way up, just tuck that under here. We're now going to zip tie it to here. 
with that zip tied up. Snip that up. And it moves us on to our next part, the extension for the O2 sensor. So we'll be threading, this is why we've left this one off still. We're gonna be connecting this and threading the rest through in behind here and down into here. Easy one with this plug. Simply grab the other one, make sure the little indentation is facing here. Simply grab that and then push in clips into place. Easiest way then to be able to thread the end through. We're just gonna pull that back over here to get it out of the way while we then have space to play with this. So just thread that one under here all the way through. Once we grab it there, pull it up somewhere. Once you've threaded it there, just pull that into place. It hits, hides us nicely in between here. Won't be going anywhere. And then to continue, so back in behind here, we'll route it up and out through here. Now once you've pulled all the slack through, fastest way is you're going to want to post it all the way up and just come out through here if you can see that there so we'll do that now and that's through so with that threaded through pull it all the way through Make sure it just sits just underneath here. And now the reason for coming around the outside of here and not just straight through here is that otherwise you'll have excess of this left over and it will have nowhere to sit. But then also rather than just clip that straight in here, which will look out of place, we're gonna also just slide this up underneath here Pull that tight. Just comes around there nicely. Once that comes through here, can now slide into place. Much neater look. Anchors it in there as well, rather than floating around up across here. Bringing it down here. You want to slide it in behind this clip here like so make sure that's kept out of the way of there because you'll have a little grommet that needs to go in there later bring it down all the way here same again here move that one sideways and which brings us back to the plug with the plug same thing applies the little indentation faces out towards here now i could turn it this way but the beauty of going this way is it will twist it and create it to stay away from here because later when you need to push the grommet through might have trouble contacting with these wires so for tensions on it that way and slide that up into place clip that into place bend that nicely tuck it away in there and we'll move on to the cover. Placing the cover back on. Lining up the two holes. Place the two Allen bolts back in. And again using the H4, just tighten those up. With both those tightened up, move on to the other side. So without the centerpiece in, just gently nestle them in there, like so. And the other one, down here. And then just grab the little center piece. Probably won't even have to screw it in. You can just clip them into place, nice and snug. 
move down to the second one. Same with that. We're now on to the final stages. So we can now take this off. Just make sure you've tightened the bracket up here. I kept it a bit loose while I adjusted these, but now just tighten that now. And we're on to how yeah, it can. Now I'm assuming most of you are in for some fun and we'll be removing the baffle using a H4. Just remove this little nut here and washer, we won't be needing him. And then easiest way to get the baffle out, a lot of people ruin the baffle using pliers or that. It's actually as simple as grab a broomstick and just gently post it down in through here then holding it between your knees just push it through so using that broomstick get it inside then just on the edges and falls out like so now before we put the can on just get some encouragement a bit of WD just around there wipe the excess off and we're ready to install that. Needless to stay, stick a side outwards, place that on, wiggle it on, there we go. Nice snug fit and onto the two springs. Put the first spring on, now just to pull it onto place. First one done. Same again with the lower one. We're not done just yet. Using a H6, remove both passenger peg bolts. Take those out. Just be mindful with this one. You've got the space on top. Prep the bolts going back in with some Loctite. Getting the exhaust can bracket. Make sure this is facing outwards towards you. So as you can see like so. And then slide that one up and under here. Line it up with those bolts. With the bolts that you've now put Loctite on. Slide that through. Add the space on and we'll start with this one first. With both them tightened up, don't tighten them all the way, just keep them a little loose so that you have a bit of free play when mounting the bracket to the can. Moving on to the bracket, we have this side facing the wheel out that way. I'm gonna open it up like so and slip it over the exhaust can without scratching it. Now, as you can see, it's in behind here. So if we just move that up, twist that round and bring that down. I've got it in perfect position and grabbing the bolt another bit of loctite can't have enough of that don't want that coming loose on you this will be going through here and on the other side you've got the washer and the nut now before we tighten that fully just make sure you grab the can twist it so it's nice and flush that's better and then with a 12 mil We'll just tighten that one up. With that nice and tight, move back to the peg, tighten them up. And if you're looking for chicken strips, even spec savers won't help you here. With that all tightened, there's only one thing left to do, start her up. <laughs> 